Hello. I have missed all of you. So typically, we only use clips from movies we've done before. But in this case, we've got a movie that stars Jon Snow and Rob Stark fighting over a woman named Cersei. I love you, Cersei. Okay, I, I think I'm gonna stop. I'm in love with you, Cersei. Why? So naturally, we had to go Game of Thrones on this one. Let us know how many lines from the show you caught, and tell us which one was your favorite in the comments. Now please enjoy The Eternals. The war for Cersei's cut. Last time, Jamie, we are not calling it that. Here's The Eternals, Game of Thrones edition. And now it begins. It's about time. So we meet Cersei, a scientist working in a museum. So there she is, high and mighty Queen Cersei. Late as usual. As she's giving a presentation, there's an earthquake. She tells the kids to get under the tables, but has to help one of them that's too stupid to get out of a chair, only to find other ones that were even more stupider and just move to the walls. They're not worth saving. He has a point. But she rushes over to save one of the idiots, making it just in time to stop a display from falling on her. But she does this by turning it into sand. And it's a good thing this girl's an idiot. I'm not an idiot. Otherwise, she'd be questioning why she's covered in sand and not a giant ammonite fossil that should have killed her. But nobody noticed, so she's good. At least until later that night, when she's walking home with her sister Sprite and her boyfriend Dane that they're rudely ignoring so they can talk about him behind his back. Because he's pretty, is that it? You like his pretty hair and his pretty eyes. Then this monster comes out of the river and attacks him. Cersei liquefies the cement, then hardens it again, trapping it for like five seconds. Then she stupidly lures it away from the empty riverside walkway to one of the busiest streets in London, putting a bunch of people in danger. Why? Well, she wanted to make sure that Dane and Sprite were okay, so she endangered half of London instead. Oh no, you did. So when it's about to attack her, more of her start popping up, and more of Sprite too. See, Sprite has the ability to cast illusions and is able to confuse the monster. Where'd they go? Then Dane makes it to the street, just in time to tell all the people who are too stupid to run away from the monster in the middle of the road that they should run away from the monster in the middle of the road. No shit. So the two people she was trying to protect went there anyway? Yeah, she probably should have just stayed by the river. It's too late for that. But anyway, they start moving around and are about to run away when it realizes which one is the real sprite. Oh, that's she is. But just before it kills her, it's slammed through the side of a building and shot with lasers. Which means you're better than Cersei. And then some handsome dude walks out. He is not a dude. You're a dude. This is a man. A handsome, muscular man. But he's too busy posing to realize that it got back up, so it's able to tackle him into a bus. Ow. Oh. Sprite and Dane also missed it getting back up because they were so mesmerized by Icarus's awesomeness that they chose to turn their backs on the monster that was just trying to kill them. I like watching him too. But Icarus lasers it into the river and it fucks off. Well, how many people are dead because she led the monster to the street? Nobody. Not even when she turned a bus that was flipping over into rose petals. Because obviously, with this many people running around, no one but the driver would be on the bus. You're fine, dude. So knowing that this is Cersei's ex, Dane's understandably intimidated by Icarus. How long were you two together? 5,000 years. But they got together in 575 BC and broke up around 1920. So they weren't even together for half that long. Your math is blowing my mind. But Icarus does not give a crap about Dane. Human male, threat, low to none. Cersei can keep him as a pet if she wants. But now Cersei has to tell Dane the truth. I have a feeling they might be a the big three. What big three? Androids, aliens, and wizards. She's what they call an Eternal from the planet Olympia. <laughs> and she and her friends serve the Celestial Erisham. Like Ego? Yeah, just like Ego. Small G, son. And 7,000 years ago, Erisham sent her and nine others on a spaceship to save humans from these monsters called Deviants. When they landed, the first thing they saw was a man too stupid to run from one, and he died. It's a beautiful creature. What? Well, what chance would he have had against a monster? I need a weapon! You have one! Even if he knew he was going to die, any resistance he gave the monster would give his kid a chance to get away. But Icarus got there just in time to save his son, who was also too stupid to run away. Kind of a running theme in the story. Humanity may be coming along slower than some of us want. And after they fought off more of the Deviants showing off their powers to the people, the kid's like, You couldn't have shown up like 10 seconds sooner to save my dad? I was distracted. How am I supposed to sit here planning a war when you're over there looking like that? So the Eternals fought together for thousands of years and considered themselves siblings. Little brother. 
beloved siblings. But their leader, Ajax, is their mother. Hey, is Ajax your actual name? Because it sounds suspiciously made up. So they all arrived in 5000 BC, and then 4,425 years later, Icarus finally gets the balls to hit on Cersei. So they bang. What took you so long? Should have done this five centuries ago. And then it only takes him another 975 years to put a ring on it. Whoa, just like that? So they're just this one big, happy, incestuous family. Drinking, traveling the world, banging each other, and killing deviants. Those were the good old days. Until 1521, when Thena starts mumbling some crazy shit and attacks the others. You've never had to fight me. But I've always wanted to. Gilgamesh had to agree to be her babysitter, so Ajak wouldn't erase all her memories. Why would she do that? She has what they call Mad Weary, and they say the only way to fix it is if they erase all her memories and call Erishim to tattle on her. But this makes Druid mutiny and decide that he doesn't have to listen to Ajak anymore. See, she told them that they're not allowed to interfere in any human conflicts, so they were all just standing around watching soldiers slaughter people. Because that's what heroes do. And Druig is all, I can make him stop, and I'm tired of you telling me that I can't. So he does. Druig sucks. He does, sir. And then Mommy's favorite, Icarus, is ready to kick his ass, but Ajax stops him. I would knock your heads together and lock you in a bedchamber until you remembered that you were brothers. Since the deviants that they were hunting were the last ones... Is that all of them? Not all. She says that they should separate and live amongst the people. And they're like, okay, and go their separate ways. So Druig uses his mind control to take all the people and go start a village. Him and his cult. It's not a cult. So after hearing all this, Dane's pretty okay with finding out that he's dating an alien with superpowers. You're like a wizard. And he's even cool with her leaving with her ex to go find their mommy. I don't like how casual you're being about this. It's unnatural. So Cersei, Sprite, and Icarus head to Ajax Ranch to find her dead. She's dead. Sprite and Icarus go inside, leaving Cersei to cry over her dead body. But then this ball of light flies out of Ajax's throat and into Cersei's. She's transported somewhere, but before she can figure out what's going on, she finds herself back at the ranch because the others snapped her out of the trance. She lets them know what she saw, and Icarus is like, are you sure? Because you could just be a nut job like Thena. Are you completely mad? But she's sure that she was talking to their sky daddy, so they go to Mumbai to see Kingo. He's now a Bollywood superstar who ditched Sprite years ago so he wouldn't have to move all the time like the Collins. Well, wouldn't all of them have to move a lot? Well, since Sprite looks like a 12-year-old, she has to move more often. Uh, run to the litter. But she can make herself look older, but the second somebody touches her, the illusion breaks. Why did Arisha make me this way? But Kingo's made people think that he's the last of a long line of stars in this family. Grandfather, father, and me. But apparently nobody ever wonders why they all look 40. When we first met, he thought I was a vampire, and he tried to stake me through the heart. So he agrees to go with them, but brings his valet with him. He wants to make a documentary about the Eternals, but somehow is not very impressed with Cersei's ability to turn rock into gold. He tells me you shit gold. Out of his butt? When they get to Gilgamesh and Thena, they find a dead deviant, and Thena tries to kill him again. Put away your blade. And Cersei talks to Erisham again, who tells her their real mission. There's a baby celestial Tiamat that's been using the earth as an egg, and he's about to hatch. This is Timit, son of Timit. So the only reason that they were supposed to save humans from deviants was so that they could make more humans. And now that there's enough, the energy that they produce is making Tiamat hatch. So Cersei's super upset that the Earth is gonna die, but Erishim is like, how do you think new galaxies are born? The new celestials do that. It's the circle of life. All men must die, but we are not men. And then she finds out that Ajak knew this was gonna happen the whole time. Ajak knew about it? Yeah. Why would she want them to live with the people they're gonna kill? Oh, that's not even the stupidest part. All of the Eternals are robots. Do a lot of people not know if they're robots? Think about it, right? I'm right. Erisham made them himself, but designed them in such a way that they need their memory wiped every time they get a new mission. So Thena's Mad Weary is just her memory wipe failing. But if their memories are wiped, how would they know what Mad Weary was? Well, most likely it doesn't wipe Ajax's memory, so this is probably a lie they came up with just in case this happens. But the real question should be, is why does her remembering make her attack her family? Turns out we are the bad guys. But collectively, they all don't seem to notice that they have no memories prior to them being on the spaceship, even though they all think that they're going to go back to Olympia when they're done, which doesn't actually exist. There is no Olympia. But if they want the population to grow, why wouldn't they stop people from killing each other? Well, they weren't supposed to interfere with any human wars, because during wars, countries develop better ways of treating injuries and advanced technologies. Well, why wouldn't they just have Drogon Fastos do that? I know, right? They could have just created a utopia where all the people had to do was bang, and they could have got the same result. I could teach you how to do it. I know how to do it. 
You know nothing. Well, it might take you a few million years of practice before you get really good at it, but yes. But the world has almost been destroyed a lot. Like a lot. Like a lot, a lot? Yes. Why didn't they stop those? Okay, but think about how fast they resolved those events. Even if they managed to hear about those in time, realistically, only two of them could have made it there to do anything. Icarus and Makari. Yeah! But hold on, it gets dumber. See, Erisham also created the Deviants. He sent them to all the planets to kill the Predators, but once they did that, they started killing the intelligent life of the planets too. So then he made the Eternals to kill them, but for some reason didn't program them to know their mission. He instead made it so they would have feelings and stuff. And since he did, Cersei wants to protect the people. Love is the death of duty. So she tells everyone what's going on, and that she's going to stop it. I'm not going to stop the wheel. I'm going to break the wheel. They think that Druid might be able to help put Tiamat to sleep, but they don't know if it's possible. <laughs> and some of them don't think that they should, even if he can. So they agree to wait until they're all together to decide what to do. Cersei should decide. Well, Druid stayed in the Amazon, and he's still controlling the village that he took over when they split up. He wants a minute to think about what they're asking, and Icarus is all like, let's just leave him behind. But Cersei's in charge, so they agree to wait around for his decision. And while they wait, Gilgamesh and Thena went off into the woods to talk about how much Thena appreciates everything he's done for her. I have a bad feeling about this. And Cersei asks Icarus why he ghosted her. I beg your forgiveness. But just as he's about to answer, a pterodactyl grabs him. She won't be happy about that. And somehow, Cersei didn't see this giant bird swooping down right in front of her. Was she mesmerized by Icarus's awesomeness? Probably. Oh, you guys didn't pick up on that? Then another jumps out and kills one of the villagers, and another one goes after Cersei. Kingo uses his finger guns to protect them the best he can, and with Icarus gone, he's the only fighter left. It's all on you. Cersei gets a bunch of villagers into a cabin and turns it into metal to protect them, then gets slammed into another building. Druig makes a bunch of his cult members shoot at the Deviant while Cersei traps it under a tree. But Cersei convinces Druig to let them go, giving it an opportunity to escape. He never should have trusted Cersei. Kingo needs to charge up so he can kill the Doberman-looking one, so Sprite distracts it. How can someone so small be such a huge pain in my ass? And then he blows his head off, and it dies. Aw, oh, yuck. Disgusting slobs. Gilgamesh and Thena see Icarus fighting the pterodactyl, and get there just in time to see him get attacked by the succubus demon. I heard that a succubus was about sex. Eh, Sprite might have been on the horny side when she told that one. It's true, buddy. Anyway. Gilgamesh saves Icarus, and just as he recovers, Thena starts glitching. She attacks him, but he's too stupid to fly away. I suppose it does seem strange. And Gilgamesh stupidly leaves the injured Deviant alive to protect Icarus. It seems that the succubus Deviant is the one in charge, and it sends the other two back to the camp. The young wolf is on the move. So Icarus follows them. You stay here, I'll come back. He kills the pterodactyl, and then gets to camp just in time to save Druid from the tiger by lasering its face off. Then he saves Sprite and Kingo from the wolf Deviant. But it's kicking his ass, so Cersei stabs it. Then it attacks her into an insanely deep pool that's chilling in the middle of the village, and she turns it into a tree. I can't change sentient beings. Liar! And everyone's super shocked because no one knew she could do that. She never tried in 7,000 years? Yeah, and you thought it was bad that Clark Kent took 30 years to try to fly. Are you effing stupid? But while everyone was thinking that what Cersei did was awesome, Thena starts glitching again, and the Mega Deviant decides to go after her. And even though Gilgamesh was holding his own while he was the target, when he's able to attack it from behind, it gets him. And he dies. Oh, get back. It doesn't even hurt! Thena sees this, but since she promised that she would stay put, she just watches him and gets all sad. Thena, the goddess of war, the greatest warrior of Olympia. I could have used some help. And then after it kills Gilgamesh, the Deviant gets more human-like, and now it can talk. Hello? What? Well, in London, it healed itself, so it seems to be absorbing their powers. Or I guess since they're all robots, cutting and pasting their powers. But he tells them that the Deviants were left to die during the emergence, and that's why they killed people, so the egg would never hatch. But if Erisham never reused them, how would they know about the emergence? And why would they think they'd be left to die? I guess he told them. Then he went all surprised Pikachu when they didn't want to die. What do we say to the god of death? Not today. And that's why he made the Eternals like flash drives. Delete and reuse. Have the protocol droids mind wiped. Oh no. So the Super Deviant is like, we're alike, but I hate you and want to kill you. But then he goes for Thena, and Icarus scares him away. The next day they go see Fastos. And originally he wanted to give humans more advanced tech than Ajax would allow, but after nukes were used, he just gave up on humans. So they don't think he's going to want to help. But when they get to him, they find out that he's married with a kid. Robots can have kids? He's adopted. 
He tells them that his family has renewed his faith in humanity. So they're like, so you'll help us save the world? And he's just like, nah. Life affords no greater duty than to protect one's family. He tells him that he doesn't use his powers anymore, and then Icarus calls bullshit by lasering his window and breaking his table. We thank you for your hospitality. Which causes his husband to come in and is all, if there's a chance you can save our son, um, I'm going to need you to do that, dumbass. I mean, how do you protect your family by letting them die? Now keep in mind, Fastos is supposed to be the smart one. I drink and I know things. So now they need to go get Makari, who's still living on their ship. Is that how I'm to while away eternity? Reading. Mind needs books like a sword needs a whetstone. And it seems like in her isolation, she's become a bit of a hoarder. Is that the ebony blade? Excalibur. Oh, she named your sword. <laughs> Lots of people name their swords. Lots of cunts. They tell her that the earth is about to blow up, and she does not give a crap because she's been bored. Of course I care about the planet and the buildings and all the animals on the planet and the people. <laughs> so Fastos has figured out that he can make friendship bracelets that will combine their energy to give Druig enough power to keep the baby celestial asleep. Then, once they move all the humans to a new planet, Tiamat can emerge. I mean, Carol did it for the scrolls. How hard could it be? You're gonna need a bigger boat. But I don't know how she would handle people who were too scared to go to a new planet. They can live in my new world, or they can die in their old one. Sprite and Kingo don't like the plan and think that they should just let the Earth die and get their minds wiped. They ask Icarus to back them up. Every moment you delay gives Cersei another moment to prepare. But he says it's Cersei's call. So Sprite throws a baby fit and runs off. Then Icarus tries to go after her, but Kinko stops him and says that if he likes the plan, that he's in. Just some kind of trick. And that's when the emergence starts. So Fasto sends Makari to find the spot Speedy Gonzales style. <laughs> and now that they've run out of time, Icarus puts on his uniform and destroys Fastos' lab. We're not doing it your way. He admits that he's known about the emergence since 1575. Ajak told me everything when we left Babylon. And since they now know that he's been lying to him, and that Ajak would have picked him if she wanted the emergence to happen, they know he killed her. Mother. See, a week ago, she told Icarus that she wanted to stop it because the Avengers stopped Thanos. But we also knew that she was having second thoughts back in Babylon, so I guess the reason that she told Icarus then was so she would have somebody to stop her from backing out. And unfortunately, it worked a little too well. This was your treason. Because he took her to a place where deviants had been frozen for centuries. Sleep beneath the ice for thousands of years. And he pushed her off a cliff, and she died. Hard to blame you. Cersei so will anyway. And he took her body home, and it's a good thing that they found her at night, because his setup wouldn't have worked if they could have seen all the crap he set on fire. I burned it down. They burned everything. And I don't know if he's sad that he killed his mommy, or pissed that he broke up with his girlfriend a century ago, just to have Ajax back out. Why did he have to break up with her? Well, he was afraid he wasn't going to be able to keep the secret anymore after keeping it for thousands of years. If I'd gone back to her, I would only have told her the truth. So he may have killed Ajak, so Cersei wouldn't have been sad the week before the emergence. The things I do for love. <laughs> but as they're arguing, Makari comes back and is going to reveal to him his location. So Icarus tries to kill her. Kingo jumps in front of her, and she runs away. And then he yells at Icarus. You killed my mother! So even though the Kingo believes that they should let the emergence happen, he's pissed that Icarus betrayed him. You have less honor than a back alley whore. He backs off, but tells them that he's going to have to kill him if they try to stop the emergence. But Spread is all for this, and they fuck off together just as Thena comes in. I guess she wasn't invited to the family meeting. Shouldn't have brought her here in the first place. Then Kingo decides that he's not going to help him, but he's also not going to help Icarus either. As you can see, being an Eternal does not preclude you from having human emotions, such as cowardice. So he and Karan go home. And do what? Watch TV? So the only one that has had a person with them this whole time is not going to fight to save the people. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you can kiss the lunchbox goodbye. They're worried the Druig won't be able to put Tiamat to sleep without everyone's power, so they talk about having Cersei kill it. Why don't we just find baby Thanos, you know, and... First of all, that's horrible. Well, she doesn't want to kill him, and has a baby fit, so they convince her that it won't come to that, and then Thena gives her a pep talk. Get up. Well, that was... Very moving. Fastos thinks that he can fix the friendship bracelets with Cersei's light circle thingy, and I'm pretty sure he mentored Tony Stark at some point. Now he's a famous Avenger and won't return my calls. Yes, it's very cool. But he fixes the bracelets, and because time is of the essence, they change into their uniforms and take the Domo to where Tiamat is. But Icarus and Sprite are already there, and Sprite is all, you're not really going to kill him, are you? And he's like, fuck yeah I am, and blasts their ship. He runs into Thena, but it seems that he figures he only has to kill Druid. 
He has to die. Athena knows that Gilgamesh is dead because he killed Ajax and is all, nah, let's fight. Step aside or there will be violence. I choose violence. Makari took Druig and Cersei near the volcano and they activate the Unimine. When this triggers Athena's, Icarus now knows where to find him, which isn't hard. Because we're connected. He grabs Druig, flies him way up, and then lasers his ass back to the ground. By the time they knew what was happening, it had already happened. And then he destroys the ship and goes down to the rest of them to tell them that he killed Druig. So they might as well give up. But if all he thinks he has to do is kill Druig, why would he destroy the ship? Doesn't he think they might need it once the earth breaks? I don't know. I think he just wanted them to think that they can't beat him or something. Power resides where men believe it resides. For no match, it's Icarus. But Makari isn't happy that he killed her brother. Your brother or your lover? Are you two? No, because I hate it. So she speed beats the shit out of him. <laughs> Now Cersei's the only one who can stop it, but without Makari, she has to run the rest of the way up there. So everyone stays behind to kick Icarus's ass, at least until the Uber Deviant shows up. Really? This guy again? Why do you want to help him? Even though it wants Icarus dead too, they have to fight it because it'll be way too powerful if it gets Icarus's power. Well that makes it simple then. Then it flashes Gilgamesh's power, so Athena's like, Oh, this shit is on. So she follows it into a cave, which is really stupid because if it's in a cave, it can't take anyone's powers. Well, I'm sure that was a lot of fun for you. It was. But that leaves Fastos and Makari to keep Icarus away from Cersei. Wait, where the hell are you going? And I guess they forgot about Sprite, who stabs Cersei. She killed Cersei. The war's over. But she's really sad about it. See, she wants everyone to die because she hasn't been able to get laid in 7,000 years. So she's like the ultimate incel. And she thinks on a new planet, she'll get a better body and is totally willing to let her friend die to do that. I can become someone else. I wonder what it would feel like to wear those pretty dresses. All I'd need to find out is your face. So Drug sneaks up on her and knocks her out. Why didn't he just mind control her? I don't know. We've never seen him use it on one of them. They only say that someone asked him to do it once, but not if he could. I do not have that kind of power. But you would think that if he couldn't control the mind of an Eternal, then he definitely wouldn't be able to control a Celestial. And maybe that's why he tells Cersei that it has to be her. I can do this. <laughs> well, now is the time to try, don't you think? And as Tiamat starts emerging, she tries to turn him to stone. And it works. Just really slow. What's happening? It's loading. Then Icarus breaks free and tries to stop her. Came into this world together, we belong together. But he can't kill her. What is honor paired to a woman's love? Probably because I love Cersei is his entire personality. I've never been with any woman but Cersei. But the emergence causes all of them to link to the Unitard anyway, and now Cersei has the power to kill the baby Celestial. I don't wanna go. No! Kill me! Kill me! Then once they're free, Icarus throws the baby fit, flies into the sun, and he dies. The boy who flew too close to the sun. Why? There's no kill for being a cunt. He probably realized how stupid he was, and if he would have just helped him with the original plan, uh, Tiamat would have just been asleep and would still be born later. The choice, and the chose wrong. And now he realizes he killed his mommy for nothing. Sometimes duty is the death of love. But if they were smart, back in 1500 BC, they could have started brainstorming alternate plans to make sure the people lived and Tiamat was born. Space colonization could take decades. Clearly you don't have the patience for all that. I mean, come on, they had over 3,000 years to come up with something, instead of waiting like a week before like an idiot. She might have even sent them out to live with the people, so they would be more likely to save them. But again, why not talk to a few of them centuries before? Didn't ask you for your advice. Anyway, everyone meets down at the beach, and Cersei is all, Sprite, I can make you human. And she's all like, okay. I want to know what it feels like to have a family. But I like to think that she didn't give her any eggs. I mean... She didn't stab her. Oh, you didn't think you needed those. So Kingo's gonna raise her. Yeah, you shouldn't insult people that are bigger than you. And I wouldn't get to insult anyone. Fastos goes home to his family, and Druig, Makari, and Thena leave to go find more Eternals to tell them the truth. And we know where to find them. It's that yes. they're going to kill them all. And that's where they meet Eros, an Eternal from Titan, who turns out to be Thanos' brother. So Thanos was right? By killing half of everybody, he was actually saving the world. And that must be why Doctor Strange only saw one way to win, because Ajax decided to stop the emergence since the Avengers brought everybody back. So apparently Cersei has no issue with her ex-boyfriend just committing suicide. Dracarys. And she goes back to Dane. He's about to tell her about this magic sword his uncle tried to give him. Called Longclaw. I don't want it. 
And that's when Ersham shows up and she floats away. Look, if you don't want to move in with me, you could just say. And when she gets up there, she sees that he has Kingo and Fastos too. He is a lot cuter in person. After all this time, you're gonna show up and just all of a sudden you want to be my dad? And he's all, let's see what's so special about these people. And if I don't like it, I'm gonna kill him just to make you feel bad. So let's hope he doesn't check the internet like Ultron. Well, these people are all horrible. They're not worth saving. But Dane loves Cersei, so he goes home to get his sword to get her back. I don't it. How is he planning to go after a space god with a sword? I don't know. And it's even dumber when you consider how big they are. Like huge. Big men fall just as quick as little ones if you put a sword through their hearts. It's probably going to look really funny, though. We are not afraid of you. Now. It's done. It's over. How many views? I don't do it for the views. A little help here. Do it. Do it. Why are you still here? 